Prime Minister Narendra Modi is uh, on a three nation trip to Germany, Denmark, and France. This is his first foreign trip in 2022. And as you know, that it comes at a time when a war in the heart of Europe has upended seven decades of mobility. is the first stop and it's one of India's first uh, most important partners in Europe with very deep bilateral relations also because of its key role within the European Union. Now India was among the first countries to establish diplomatic ties with uh, then West Germany the Federal Republic of Germany after the Second World War and the two countries have a strategic partnership since uh, May 2000. So it's been almost 22 years now. Uh, and it has been strengthened with the launch of this uh, mechanism called the Intergovernmental Consultations. Uh, IGC is how it is popularly referred to, uh, which was formed in 2011 at the level of uh, heads of government. Now, uh, India as is among a select group of countries with which Germany has a dialogue mechanism like this. Uh, during Modi's visit, uh, you know, uh, this uh, particular uh, fixed IGC uh, took place and as it was postponed from last year due to the pandemic. Now, his visit comes at a time when Germany has a new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, who assumed office last December. Scholz is a former finance minister and uh, who visited India in 2012 when he was the mayor of Hamburg. Uh, one interesting point to remember is Scholz was the first foreign leader with whom Prime Minister Modi had a phone conversation in 2022. Um, so uh, this visit is taking place at a time when Germany has made key strategic choices in the Russia-Ukraine war. It has promised to reduce its energy dependence on Russia and decided to increase defense spending, a significant move given its post-World War II posture. Uh, I mean, uh, so in an exclusive interview to the Indian Express, uh, uh, Chan German Chancellor Scholz, uh, he, ahead of the meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Berlin, uh, he said that uh, he's confident that there's a broad agreement between India and Germany on Russian actions that violate core principles of the UN Charter and on the principle that massacres against the civilian population are war crimes and those responsible must be held accountable. Uh, now, after the talks, uh, bilateral meeting uh, between uh, Prime Minister Modi and Chancellor Scholz, uh, Scholz said that, you know, uh, borders should not be changed through the use of violence and inviolability as well as the sovereignty of nations has to be universally accepted. Uh, Scholz said he has invited uh, Prime Minister Modi to the G7 meeting, which will be held in Germany in the last week of June, which is next month. Uh, Modi, who did not name uh, Russia in his statement, said uh, there will be no winning party in this war. Everyone will suffer. Now, this is a new formulation going beyond what New Delhi has been so saying so far, which is calling for cessation of hostilities and saying dialogue is the only way to resolve the conflict. Uh, so uh, the two sides had a good meeting. They also discussed Indo-Pacific. Uh, in, in, a, in that particular, uh, in the context of South China Sea, what's happening um, uh, in, uh, in uh, the Indian Ocean. So, and both sides sort of underline the importance of uh, unimpeded com commerce and freedom of navigation uh, as per international law. Uh, so, uh, the, the 
external affairs minister jay shankar is also traveling with uh, prime minister modi and he also discussed the russia ukraine conflict with his german counterpart annalena berbock uh, the two sides also signed nine agreements including the areas of migration mobility green hydrogen and environment uh, um, chancellor scholz also referred to the heat wave in india calling it an impact of climate change so uh, that's what uh, the germany uh, visit was all about the prime minister's visit to denmark is taking place again at a time when uh, you know the two countries have elevated the uh, the the relationship to the level of a green strategic partnership uh, which was uh, which was sort of uh, framed in september 2020 during a virtual summit between modi and the danish pm mette fredriksen uh fredriksen was in india on a state visit from octo in october uh, last year which was the first visit by a head of government following the pandemic uh the uh, the two sides uh, also holding an india nordic summit now this format is special uh where uh, you know sweden finland norway denmark and iceland all these five countries uh, will have a summit meeting with the indian prime minister and uh, this kind of engagement uh, the only other country with whom india nordic summit i mean nordic summit takes place is with the us uh, this again with eco economic growth climate change global security are key areas of cooperation and the summit is taking place at a time when the two nordic countries are looking at joining nato and uh, amid the sense of insecurity in europe prime minister modi uh, also visits france uh, on his way back to uh, india and there he is essentially going to meet president emmanuel macron who's just been elected after a tough election now india and france as you know have traditionally had close relations in 1998 the two entered into a strategic partnership with uh, defense and security cooperation space cooperation and civil nuclear co cooperation being its pillars uh, france was among the few western countries to not condemn india after the 1998 book contests it also supports india's claim for permanent membership at the un security council and it uh, shares the same concerns uh, on terrorism it has been very supportive of india at the un security council especially after the pulwama terror attack um so modi will meet macron there and uh, uh, one of the uh, important things because they're meeting in this context of the russia ukraine conflict uh, modi and macron are some of the few uh, world leaders who have maintained open communication channels with both the russian president vladimir putin and ukraine's president volodymyr zelensky so uh, it's a it's an important uh, meeting between the two uh, countries especially because france is holding the presidency of the european union this year so uh, to sum it up uh, modi's visit signifies the importance attached to india's ties with europe uh for the past few years europeans have uh, sometimes or sometimes felt that as a whole the modi government gives more trust to other strategic partners like the us japan and even australia and the uae than europe uh the over the last few weeks the intensity of engagement has increased in the wake of the war in ukraine with foreign ministers from U uk poland portugal luxembourg netherlands norway and others and of course the president of the european commission visiting india um although india in 1962 had been one of the first countries to establish diplomatic relations with the european economic community which is the which was the precursor of the european union the relationship focused initially on trade and economic cooperation 
uh, a cooperation agreement signed in 1994 broad based that relationship to include ministerial meetings and a political dialogue now these ties have now expanded to include political and security issues climate change clean energy information and communications technology space and nuclear health agriculture food security education and culture so modi's visit to europe is likely to set the stage for the india eu summit and a boost in the free trade agreement negotiations which have been ongoing for a decade and a half now